Hey, this is Chris, but my friends call me Stones. Thanks for checking out my channel, and thanks for checking out my latest video. It's been a couple of weeks, I apologize. I did not get any videos recorded last week for a couple of different reasons, and one of those reasons was is the weather just wasn't cooperating with me. I did get to yard sales and garage sales on, on Thursday and Friday. Didn't find much. There was a couple of items that I thought were really cool and I wanted to feature and get that information out there for you if you didn't know about these items. But come Saturday, it started raining, and it didn't stop raining for a few days. The weather is changing around here. It's coming, guys. It's coming. It's slowly coming where we're not going to have yard sales and garage sales for, you know, for a while because of the, the fall weather, the winter weather. Uh, when you live in northeast Ohio, that's what you have to deal with. And I can tell it's slowing down. There's not as many yard sales and garage sales out there to be had, and it's because we're in that time of year. And I hate to see it go, because I love this time of year, but it's going to happen. Um, but um, I did find um, actually quite a few yard sales today. I was pleasantly surprised. Did find a few on Thursday, um, but the only thing I bought was this. This box of accessories for uh, vintage action figures. Accessories, weapons, uh, bits and parts, things like that. I saved the box because I wanted to show it off. This is how she had it set up in her garage, 10 for a dollar, basically 10 cents a piece. Um, I had asked her what she wanted for the whole box. Uh, she originally threw out $10 to me. I went, I counted at five, and then I kind of, um, we met at six bucks. We agreed on six dollars, and actually that was me offering an additional dollar. She didn't up the price. She actually accepted my original five dollar offer. Now, the ironic thing about this was, if I would have given her the $10 that she originally asked for, that means there had to have been 100 pieces in here uh, at 10 for, 10, 10 for a dollar. And when I got home and I started working on it, I said, well, let's, let's double check and count. There was only 95 pieces. So if I would have given her the $10, I would have actually been paying more than what she originally wanted and not less. So I gl I'm glad I got the six bucks, even though it really doesn't matter. Uh, this was worth at least 10 bucks to me as well. So, uh, so vintage uh, accessories or accessories and weapons for vintage action figures. These, that's a great find. Don't, don't pass up on these, um, whether it's at thrift stores or garage sales or yard sales, because collectors um, want complete action figures. And oftentimes when an action figure was bought, like when I was a kid, the first thing that got lost was the action, the, the accessories and the weapons, or they were broke or, or whatever, or both. So a lot of times collectors who are trying to complete their collection and, and get those action figures uh, with everything that they were meant to have, they need to find the accessories somewhere. They need those weapons somewhere. And sometimes the rarity of those accessories being available uh, can make them extremely, extremely valuable. Uh, I've seen ones that were ridiculous price, you know, for just one gun or one whatever. Um, so I started going through these and I started, started to identify some of these. Uh, what I was using is I'm using Google Lens. And if Google Lens could figure it out for me, then that led, led me down the path of trying to figure out what the other ones for, were um, for. So a lot of times... Google Lens will identify what it is, what action figure it's for. Then I would pull up that action figure and I'd see what other accessories went with it. And a lot of times it was some of the ones that I already had. So um, that's what I end up doing. So just to show you a few of these pieces, this is the power staff from Skeletor from He-Man Masters of the Universe. This is He-Man's sword over here. This is his, his battle armor, his chest piece. Each one of those go for easily 10 bucks a piece. So there's $30 already for a $6 investment. And then um, I started, a lot of them was G.I. Joe stuff, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle stuff, and He-Man stuff. Uh, mostly He-Man and Turtles. Um, these pieces right here for Chrome Dome, um, these silver, they're like silver um, shoulder pads, and, and they go for like 10 bucks a piece. And on and on and on. And I've got a lot here that I still have to identify. Now, some of these obviously aren't for action figures. I mean, Sebastian from Little Mermaid. And there's like, um, you know, here's a horse. I think this is a um, play school or something like that. But obviously not action figure related. But there's still quite a bit here. So I'm, I'm, I'm assuming there's hundreds of dollars worth of accessories here easily. Now, my dilemma, my question for you is, do I sell... Like, for example, this is four pieces or three pieces for 
uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle action figure dirt bag. Do I sell all these together? Now, someone who's trying to complete the action figure may already have a couple of these pieces. So do I, do I sell them individually or do I sell them all together because they belong together for that certain action figure? And that's something that I got to figure out. So that was Thursday. And then today, Friday, I went to actually two rummage sales, two church rummage sales. This first one I'd been to before, uh, did well there before. And this particular church rummage sale, it's name your own price. You basically take what you want and you give them what you want. And the money goes towards their specific ministry, which was their soup kitchen or their food pantry or whatever they were calling it. Uh, so I paid up because I like good causes like that. I, I like good Christian ministries that have good causes behind them. So I paid up, paid a little bit more than what I normally would have for these items. But I paid $40 uh, for these four items. So, you know, um, five bucks a piece. Did I say forty dollars? I said I think it's twenty dollars. I paid twenty, so five bucks a piece. This Genesis plug-and-play game, Arcade Motion, brand new condition, sells for fifty dollars. Um, I got this Case Logic case for myself. This will be personal use. I have a GoPro. <laughs> I've been saying all summer that I'm going to be using it. Matter of fact, I have a recycling event tomorrow, and I plan on using it tomorrow at that recycling event. But I keep on saying that, and it never happens. So we'll see. But I got this case for um, that GoPro. I also got this Tascam unit. This is a portable CD music and voice transfer unit. Tascam is a good brand to look out for when it comes to electronics. I've had them in the past. I've had other things in the past made by them and have done really well. Matter of fact, the very first one that I ever came across was probably four years ago, maybe five, at a different church rummage sale. It was a brand new in the package task cam and it was for guitar training not vocal training guitar training and it was a portable cd music thing as well um that sold for in brand new condition i think it sold for like 180 dollars and i paid like maybe five dollars for it and then the last thing I, I got was this jonathan park cd set jonathan park is a christian story adventure series um like an audio book um, and I've had these in the past, done really well with these in the past. Um, the first time I ever came across these was a couple years ago. I found a huge stack of them at Goodwill for, I think, like three bucks a piece. And they were all brand new sealed. And I ended up selling the whole collection for like $180 or something like that. I've had used ones in the past that have done really well. They sell pretty fast. I've had this particular series in the past. Currently, there's only one listing in use condition, and I think they're asking like $18 for it. Mine's brand new sealed, so I'm probably going to ask more like $25 to $30 for that. The other church rummage sale that I went to, I didn't buy anything, um, and it was one where they priced everything individually. They had rooms full of stuff, more stuff that I could go through, and I didn't buy a thing because I couldn't find anything. Uh, so that's how it goes sometimes. Uh, this church rummage sale... They didn't have a ton. Um, it was one room, but I found some good stuff. Then I went to this garage sale, and I put garage sale in quotes because this guy was actually running out of storage units. And it looked like he had two or three of them filled with stuff, and he just was basically selling out of his storage units. And I paid um, 10 bucks a piece. These are Harley Davidson belts. I've never sold Harley Davidson belts before. So I thought I'd give, I'd give it a chance and give it a try and start trying to look these up at first, just calling them different things, and um, then realized that they actually put the, the model name of the belt printed on the inside of the belt. So this is called the Lone Ranger. And then on this one, it's called the Doom Roller. Uh, paid 10 bucks a piece for these... Um, like I said before, this Lone Ranger one, there's been one past sale and it sold for $50 plus some expensive amount of shipping must have been sent to someone outside of the country. Uh, there are no listings for this right now. Uh, since it, the last one sold for $50, maybe I'm going to ask $60, maybe $75, I don't know. And this Doom Roller, which has skulls on it, is nowhere to be found on eBay. No past sales, no current listings. 
Um, so I'm going to try to go for another 50 to $75 on that one as well. We'll give it a try and, and then see what happens. And then actually one of the first yard sales that I went to today was kind of like a small little community sale. There was like four houses that were participating um, in this yard sale on the road. And I bought everything from one house. Um, I paid 50 cents a piece for these old Thomas the Train. And these caught my eye because I've seen all sorts of Thomas the Train before. Um, but I've never seen small ones that are metal and have a, a combo of the car attached to the engine. Typically it's just the engine, just the car, and then they connect either through a magnet or a hook or something like that. But I, I've never seen ones that were this small and then had a, like a combo unit of like two pieces as one. Um, so I thought there might be value on this. I also saw that the copyright on this was like 1988. And I didn't know they made these uh, that early. I thought Thomas the Train was something like late 90s is when it started. But these say 1988, and I thought, well, these might be the original ones. These might be worth a lot of money, and there's no real value. Maybe five bucks a piece on those. I may not even list those. Now, this is probably my best find of the day, and I paid two bucks for it. I don't like glassware. I don't know much about glassware. I'm trying to learn. But even by learning, I just... It scares me. Every time I touch this thing, I think I'm gonna break it. But I paid two bucks for this, and I wrote down the name because I cannot say it. It's Skurlock something or other. And this is a very vintage piece. Uh, 1940s is what I'm seeing all the listings on eBay. Now this is a five piece set, technically 11 pieces because there's the lids, and then there's a, a, um, a, a tray underneath that allows it to spin. Um, the last complete one sold on eBay with these yellow lids. Uh, there's different ones. There's ones that have yellow lids, clear lids, and there's blue lids. And then there's also four-piece sets, like four containers, and then ones with six containers. So different sizes and stuff like that. The last one of this exact set sold for $150 plus shipping. Currently, there's another one on eBay, but it's in completely bad, I mean, the it's bad, bad, bad condition. Uh, the only problem with this one, and I'm really even hesitant, is that the tray is kind of rusty. But when you have these on there, you can't even tell. So I'm going to try to go for... Now, the other listings um, are just for like one container or two containers. They don't have the complete set. So these are pretty rare. So I'm probably gonna try for like maybe 175 on this set and see if anybody bites on that. Um, and that's it, that's it for the yard sales and garage sales. Now I just wanted to show you really quick some things that I sold. Um, and I gotta get these packed up and out to the post office. Uh, first thing that I sold was this lanyard, this Mountain Dew lanyard. This is a promotional item for Spark. And there's a lot of Mountain Dew fans, Pepsi fans, Coca-Cola fans. I found a bag of these at the Goodwill for like $2. And I'm selling them for $10.54 free shipping. And I've already sold like two or three of them already. So made more than my money back on those. Uh, this is the printer heads I keep on talking about. I get at the recycling events for free. These come out of the HP Office Jet Pro series. Um, they pull right out, and I sell them for $100 free shipping, $99.54 $99 free shipping. And, um, yeah, and hopefully I'll find more of these tomorrow. Now, here's one that's already boxed up, and I've mentioned this in one of my videos where I talked about returns and my problems with returns. And I just wanted to show you the results of this one. This one came back to me, returned to sender. The buyer sent me a message saying, I gave you the wrong shipping address. Um, can you send, you know, can you send it to this right, correct address? And I said, I can do that, but you have to pay for shipping again because I have to pay for shipping again. And it was your mistake, not mine. Now, if I send it to the wrong place, that's fine. I'll pay for it, but you made that mistake. So you'll have to pay for shipping again. They never responded. They never filed anything with eBay, nothing. 
So I'm going to ship this one out in, it, in its place, but this is what they look like. That's the reason why um, I brought that out. Uh, Southern Tier Brewing Company. These are coasters, beer coasters. I think that's a stack of 100. I paid, uh, I got these at the Goodwill outlet, so by the pound. I don't think it weighs a pound. It might. So maybe a buck on that. Uh, that sold for uh, 29 54 free shipping. And then I've got a vintage shirt. This is an Alaskan shirt has a metallic print on it, single stitch. Um, here's the tags you need to be looking for, 100% cotton, made in the USA. And I sold that, I probably paid $3 for this. Sold this for $23.54, free shipping. And then the big sale of the week so far is this Prosonus uh, mixing board, sound board, that I picked up at the last recycling event for free. And this sold for $499.54. Um, someone had offered me early on $300 for this, and I didn't even answer. I didn't even respond to them. Um, now, someone, I'm, I'm going to address this right now. I had posted that I sold this this morning on my Instagram account, and someone said, and I explained that I couldn't test it. There's no way of me testing everything, every feature that's on this board without me going to a church or something and plugging it up to a sound system and checking every channel, every feature, everything. There's just no way. So what I explained before was I let the customer do the testing for these, um, for this on me. I'm assuming this works. Now I'm a sound guy. It looks clean. It looks good. It's not like it was beat up or dirty or anything like that. It's, it looks really clean. And there's a couple of other things on this that indicate to me that there's nothing wrong with this board. They probably just upgraded to something else, something better, something like that. I don't, I'm not exactly sure, but there's a few indicators on here why I know it's probably in working condition. Now I did power it up. It does work. But what I meant by letting the customer test it for myself is, is I'm assuming this works and I'm going to take the chance that it works because there's absolutely no way that I can test it. Now it's going to cost me, I don't know what to ship it to them, now let's say it doesn't work. Well then, they've tested the item for me for free, right? They went through the work. Now I'm gonna have them return it to me if they wanna return it, and I'm gonna refund their money. And that's gonna, I'm gonna lose about 50 bucks for the shipping that I, you know, for the shipping to send it to them, and the shipping to get it back. But then now I know it doesn't work, and then I can resell it for $300 as a non-working board, and I'm gonna know what's wrong with it because the customer who bought it before me was going to tell me. So that's worth it for me. That's kind of the game that I play. You know, these um, printer heads that I sell a lot of, there's no way of me testing these at, at all either. I get these from printers that are donated to be recycled and I pull out the printer head before I send them off. Now I've sold a dozen of these, if not more, and only two of them have bad, been bad so far. So it's worth it to me, you know? I get these for free. I don't pay for them. It costs me about $6 to ship them out. If the person says, hey, there's something wrong with it, it doesn't work, I refund them their, their money 100%. No complaints, no arguments. Um, because I didn't pay anything for it. So it cost me $6 in shipping. That's my loss. But for everyone that works, because I got them for free, I'm pulling in $90 plus. So... To me, it's the numbers. It's it's kind of the part of the 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 business. You know, I take those chances, and a lot of times they they work out for me more often than they than they don't. Um, and then I also want to show you really quick how I'm going to ship this. Originally, I thought I was going to create a box, cut down a box, but I went to Lowe's and I saw these boxes. These are picture boxes or TV boxes for moving. And they're expensive, um, don't get me wrong. If it was for anything else, I probably wouldn't have paid this, but it's $20 for this box. And the reason why I pulled it on its side is I wanna show you kinda of how it works. It's kind of like um, a box within a box. So if your TV is bigger or smaller, you can move this accordingly. Now there's holes on the inner box, which is fine for me because that soundboard is so small that it's not going to cause I'm not going to have to pull that part out to make the box any bigger 
Then inside the box, they kind of give you like a kit. There's kind of this um, foam um, cover that you can slide the item in so it's kind of protected. And they give you these fo foam co corners. Now, I don't think these are going to fit over that soundboard, so I probably won't use them. But all I'm going to do is wrap this up in a little bit, bit of um, bubble wrap, use the slip cover. Maybe I'll do the slip cover first, then wrap it up in bubble wrap, put it in this box and tape it shut. And I think I'm good to go. So this cost 20 bucks. Now it's not worth it for most things, but for the $500, sound, uh, $500 soundboard, I think it is. Uh, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscri subscribe, all that stuff, and talk to you soon.